Protesters against the Dakota Access Oil Pipeline are celebrating the decision by the Army Corps of Engineers to look for an alternate route away from a Native American water source. But their celebration may be short-lived. House Speaker Paul Ryan blasted the federal government's ruling in a tweet, promising to continue the fight into next year. This is big government decision-making at its worst. I look forward to putting this anti-energy presidency behind us. Protesters say the pipeline is an environmental and cultural threat. Proponents argue the pipeline will provide jobs and boost the economy. MSNBC's Cal Perry is at Standing Rock Camp where the project has now been halted, at least for now. Cal, uh, wow, it looks very cold out there. You've been with the protesters for days now. What's their reaction at this point? Well, they're in a bit of shock. This camp is waking up this morning to the news that the energy transfer partner company, uh, which is in charge of building this pipeline, has released a statement. We'll, we'll put it up on the screen. Uh, and the statement basically just thumbs the finger at the administration, saying this is just politics at its worst and that the, the company is going to continue the construction pipeline. They say uh, that it's not going to change the reality for them. And word is just kind of spreading at this camp that that was the case. As you said yesterday, there was jubilation. People thought this was a historic day, a historic moment uh, between Native American tribes and the federal government. And now it seems like the question is remaining. The veterans haven't moved. I'll show you the vet tents behind me. You can see they're kind of creating their own little city. And many of these veterans are here, as they say, to protect the water protectors, to put themselves between the authorities and the people on this camp. Add to that, you have the largest gathering of Native Americans in modern history here, and a lot of these tribes are simply angry. And yesterday, when the, the jubilation broke out, some of the tribes said, hey, listen, we haven't been able to trust the federal government in over 150 years. Why would we trust that this decision is going to stick? So there's a lot of questions here. I can also tell you that the National Guard had pulled back from these ridges behind me. They're back here this morning. We've seen a number of Humvees. We've seen a number of up-armored trucks. The bridge that separates the protesters from the authorities has now been reinforced. So it, it's a wait and see situation here, but certainly sort of all of the elements for a clash are now back on, I think, Chris. Thank you so much, Cal Perry. I want to bring in California Congressman Raul Ruiz, excuse me, a Democrat and ranking member on the House Natural Resources Committee and an opponent of the pipeline. Good to see you, Congressman. Good morning. Good morning. Nice to be here, Chris. Your reaction to this decision? Well, the point is that the Standing Rock Sioux and all tribes have the right to self-determination and have a say in matters that affect their health and cultural preservation. Uh, you know, we all have that right, and so do the tribes. And this isn't just a matter of justice. This is the law. And the problem was that the Army Corps of Engineers, in their haste to fast-track this process and permit, did not heed the warnings and the severe uh, considerations of the EPA, the Department of the the Advisory Council of Historic Preservation that all said that their assessment on the environmental risk was off, that it was too risky, that they had a disregard to sacred sites, and they did not perform meaningful consultation with the tribes. And so that's where we have this conflict right now. And the, the fact that the Army Corps of Engineers now went back and reviewed their decision-making process and realized that they were in violation of those recommendations that were offered by the other agencies are now deciding to do the right thing and not allow the uh, pipeline to transverse over federal land underneath Lake Oahe that can put at risk the clean drinking water of not only the tribes but millions of families that live downstream from that uh, site. But you know opponents uh, of your position are ready for the next fight. You saw that in the tweet from Paul Ryan. Uh, North Dakota Republican Congressman Kevin Kramer issued a statement that said, I'm going to read from it, today's unfortunate Fortunate decision sends a very chilling signal to others who want to build infrastructure in this com in this country. So, what are the chances that this decision holds in your mind? What do you see as the next step? Well, the next step is to make sure that we hold the administration, the Army Corps of Engineers, accountable uh, to their process and that they make sure that that they follow the laws that are in, are in the books right now. That's the problem. You know, they say it's big government at its worst when government doesn't follow their, their own laws or when it doesn't benefit their own political um, uh, uh, ambition. But I'm an emergency medicine physician. I'm a public health expert. I 
visited the site and I saw that 16,000 gallons of oil could be transported in one minute and any leak could be devastating and catastrophic to the drinking water. That's just not my opinion. That was the opinion of the scientists and the experts from the EPA, the Department of Interior and others who said put the go back, do a full environmental impact statement, and and then make your decisions. And, and this is what they did, and they realized that it was too risky. Now, So rerouting it, it is not an alternative as far as you're concerned, taking it away from the Indian lands. You want this stopped and a whole new review done. No, no, ma'am. I don't want them to build underneath Lake Oahe, and they should do an environmental impact statement to determine where else they could possibly transport this oil. But, but keep it away from the tribe's drinking source and sacred sites. If it was already determined to be too risky to put near the waters of the city of Bismarck, then why would it be okay to build a pipeline over the waters that the Native Americans use for their health? Congressman Ruiz, good to have you. Thank you so much. I'm sure we'll talk again as this uh, continues.